First, I want to wish all of you all a blessed new year. During the new year, we receive a lot of um, blessings uh, through a WhatsApp. But one of my favorite is this. Um, I like it in Chinese. Uh, somehow the translation in English is not so good. Yong Gen Sui Zu. Follow the Lord always. Why I, I like this is because I believe that true and lasting blessings come from following Jesus. While we want all kinds of blessings from God, peace, prosperity, good health, etc. But I believe that true spiritual blessings and real lasting blessings come when we follow the Lord closely and always. And this is my heart desire for myself for the new year. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to commit this time to you. We ask that your Holy Spirit will work in our hearts, open our ears, open our hearts to receive your word, and let your word take effect in our hearts to change us, to transform us, so that we can be more like Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the third day of uh, Chinese New Year. And we know that Chinese New Year, we have a lot of uh, traditions. Although <clears throat> this year, because of the COVID, there are many things that um, we can't do or we have to scale down. Uh, for example, like visiting friends or relatives, and we cannot do our low hay, all right? at least not in the way that we wanted to do. But there are still traditions that we want to keep. And one of them is spring cleaning. I believe all of us do that before Chinese New Year. I, I did my spring cleaning well before uh, that, uh, even starting uh, last year. Uh, cleaning the windows, uh, clearing my cupboard, uh, well, my wardrobe, and also clearing my desk. I, I don't know how many of you enjoy uh, spring cleaning. I don't really like to do it because it's very hard work. <clears throat> Uh, you have to climb up to reach the corners. You have to squat down to reach hidden uh, places. And uh, you have to work very hard. And it's very tiring. But there's this sense of satisfaction and gratification you know, when it is done. Wow, the windows now look so clear. You know, the layer of dust is gone. And the wardrobe is clean and fresh. So... Um, you know, and uh, Chinese New Year, the other thing we like to do is we want to uh, put on new clothes. We want to uh, spruce up our home. We want to look our best to um, welcome the New Year. So, I wonder, while we do this for New Year, how often do we really uh, take stock of our own spiritual life to do spring cleaning to look at our own lives in relationship with God, our walk with God. Do we do it regularly or not at all? In this morning's passage that we have read, it talks about putting away the old self, which is getting rid of the old self and putting on the new uh, self. That is getting rid of the old and putting on of the new. And this is what <clears throat> we do and we want to do it during Chinese New Year. So this morning, we want to ask ourselves, what is our old self like? And what is the new self that we want to put on? Why is there a need to do that in the first place? And how can we do it? The first point we need to take note is we have to know that we have a new identity. We need to know that as a Christian, we have a new identity and position. We need to recognize that we are God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. That is in verse 12. And in verse 1 and 3, it says this, we have died and we have been raised with Christ. 
That is, now we are identified ourselves as belonging to Christ. This happened at a point when we believed and received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. For some, it may be recently. For some, it may be many, many years ago. Having a new identity requires us to live according to this. This is so in the secular world, in the job that we do. Who we are and our position determines how we should behave and what we should do. If you are a policeman, you are to behave as a policeman and do the work of a policeman. There are also rules and regulations that you need to keep as a policeman. You cannot do as you like, and the organisation will set goals and standards for you so that you can be a better policeman and to be a good policeman. Now, a policeman doesn't just keep law and order, right? But they themselves also have to keep law and order as policemen. I remember an incident which my brother related to me many years ago. Uh, he was, uh, after parking his car, of course, in a proper place, right? Uh, he was uh, walking to the hawker centre to have a meal. And he saw this police car parked beside the hawker centre, double yellow line, you know? So, of course, no police car can park double yellow line, right? Um, but then um, he saw the policeman walking to the hawker centre to buy food. And you know, my brother is the kind who has this sense of justice, you know? He really approached the policeman you know, and told them, uh, excuse me, if you are not on duty, you can't park on double yellow line. So, because the policemen are wearing uniform, right? So, as law enforcement, they can't break the law, right? When, of, when you're not on your line of duty, even when you are uh, not on your line of duty, also you cannot break your law, right? <laughs> so, um, this tells us that our identity determines how we should behave, how we should act. So similarly as believers and as disciples of Christ, God also has set some standards and a goal for us to follow. That our lives has to be consistent with our identity as followers and disciples of Jesus Christ. And the ultimate goal that God has set for us is to conform to the image of our Creator, to be like Christ in character. To achieve any goal, we need to set our minds to do it. So as followers of Christ, we need to set our mind and our heart to do what is taught us. And in verse 1, it says this, we have to seek the things that are above because we have been raised with Christ. We have been raised with Christ. Now we are citizens of heaven, though at the moment we are still living on earth. So we need to constantly remind of ourselves, of our identity as disciples of Christ, and to need to make a conscious effort to think, to seek, to do what is consistent with our identity. And this is what it says in verse 17. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of of the Lord Jesus. Second, we need to put away the old self that is not consistent or in accordance with our new identity as a disciple of Christ. While we have a new identity, there is still this old self in us that we need to deal with. In the process of spring cleaning, very often we, we cling to the old things we don't want to throw away, you know, because for, for many reasons, right, sentimental reasons. And um, some things are difficult to get rid of because it's been uh, there for so long. I was uh, trying to clean my bathroom and there was this hidden corner sir, that we have not cleaned for so long, right? And the dirt was so difficult to, no matter how hard you scrub, but you, you cannot get rid of it. So I have to pour bleach over it, you know, and pour it again and again and scrub and scrub and scrub, you know, to get rid of the dirt. And this is what you know, the old self is like. You know? Some of these things are so ingrained in us, it's so difficult to get rid of. And uh, so it is with our spiritual life, you know, the old self that we still have, the bad habits, the ungodly characteristics. 
and things that we cherish, we are not willing to give up, and we find it very difficult to get rid of them. Sometimes as believers, we downplay our sins, just like you know, how some countries downplay the seriousness of virus. The old self not dealt with will cause spiritual disease that will suffocate our spiritual life. In this passage, there are some serious sins that are mentioned, like sexual immorality, and some which we may consider not so uh, serious, like anger and lies. And yet, the first sin started with a lie. Adam and Eve chose to believe a lie and did not take God's word seriously. And Satan is the father of lies. He distorts God's word and causes us to be led astray. And very often, it is the subtle sins, the hidden sins in our life that we ignore that caused us as Christians to be fruitless. Our pride, worldliness, self-righteousness, self-centeredness. In fact, the Apostle John mentioned in one of his letters, say that if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, which means that we are lying, we are lying to ourselves. Here in this passage, when it says putting away it literally means take off one's clothes, the old dirty clothes that we are wearing, the old self. I'm sure if our clothes are dirty, we want to remove and take it on and put on clean ones. In the spiritual realm, it's not so easy. Besides a conscious effort on our part we need to take, we need the help of the Holy Spirit in our lives to deal with our old self, the sins that beset us. Just now, I talked about using bleach to clean the bathroom. Uh, I, I, I told some of you I volunteered uh, to do chapel services in St. Francis uh, Methodist School. And uh, last year, they had this uh, Good News Day. So Good News Day is a time when they want to um, reach out to the students with the good news of uh, the gospel. So uh, one of the object lessons was uh, they used um, a cup with a bit of iodine in it to represent uh, us and the sin, you know. And the other cup, they have bleach, all right, to represent Jesus, all right. And they say that in order for uh, you to get rid of your sin, you need Jesus, which is represented by the bleach. And uh, what, did, what uh, we do is that we pour the bleach into the cup with the iodine. And lo and behold, you know, the iodine just disappeared because the bleach uh, took away the, the color, all right. So... I mean, this is a very good illustration of how um, we, we uh, get rid of uh, our, our sin. Because, yeah, the, 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 the bleach is there, all right, and the sin is there, but what do you need to do? You have to have the act, right? You have to put this into uh, the cup, all right, with iodine. So it is the same with us. So it is by faith that we believe that the Holy Spirit can do this work in our life. It's not just by self-will, wishing it to be away or wishing yourself to be good, all right? We need to submit ourselves to the work of the Holy Spirit because on our own, we can't change and get rid of our old self. So one of the things that I do regularly is self-examination. I often ask God to search my heart, and this is what David did in Psalms 139, uh, verse 23. I ask myself, is there hidden sins in my heart? Pride, self-righteousness, you know, unforgiveness. You know. Now, self-examination is not self-condemnation. God does not condemn us and neither should we. Soul searching is having a realistic view of the condition of our heart, of our soul. And inner healing and transformation and change can only start if we are honest with ourselves by getting rid of our old self. Third, it is not just about getting rid of our old self, not doing what is not consistent with our identity. After taking off the old self, the dirty clothes, we need to put on the new ones, fresh clothes. 
So we need to put on the new self, the new self that is consistent with our identity, and that is Christ-like and godly character. And that's what's stated in verses 12 to 14. Compassion, kindness, humility, patience, forgiving others, being united as one and to have love for one another. We need to develop godly character that reflects our new identity in Christ. How do we do this? How does this happen and how do we work this out in our lives? First, we need the Word of God and the work of the Holy Spirit. If you look at verse 16, it says, Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly, dwell in us richly. It is the Word of God that does the work in our lives. But we need more than the Word of God because many of us listen to the Word of God and read the Bible and sometimes we do not change. Why is that so? Now, in, in John chapter 17, verse 17, Jesus said this, uh, Jesus' prayer for us is that, sanctify them, that is us, uh, with the truth and your Word is truth. So God's Word is the power that helps us to change and to sanctify us. But more than that, we need the work of the Holy Spirit. That's why in John 16, earlier, Jesus said that it is the Spirit of truth that will guide us to understand God's Word, the truth. And it is the Holy Spirit that convicts us of our sins and guides us and teaches us and corrects us and trains us in righteousness. We need the Word of God and the work of the Holy Spirit, both to do this work in us. The process of renewal requires us to submit to God, working in us, rather than we taught the work of God through our rebellious, all right, rebellion and you know, our stubbornness. It is the Word of God working in us through the Holy Spirit so that we can bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The renewal involves our mind as we took hold and we internalize God's truth in us through the work of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. The second thing that we need to do is we need to gather together as a community of believers. We cannot bring about change in us alone. Besides the work of the Holy Spirit, we need the support and a conducive environment for change and growth. The second part of verse 16 says that we need to come together to worship, to encourage each other as a community of believers. Other versions of the Bible put it this way. It's translated as, teach and help one another on the right road. Teach and strengthen each other. So you notice that in this second part of verse 16, you need each other to help us to live a life that is consistent with our identity in Christ as followers of Jesus Christ. We need to come together as a group of believers for spiritual growth, as we worship God together, as we listen to His Word together, as we study His Word together and encourage and strengthen each other so that we can be more like Christ. Another passage in the Bible, that's in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16, when it describes the church, the believers, all right, not the physical church, as the body of Christ. How we as a body need to come together to build each other up. I read to you the New Century Version because I thought it really you know, tells us what exactly, you know, how it is in line with what we want to say uh, this morning. That Christ gave us gifts to prepare God's holy people for the work of serving, to make the body of Christ stronger. And this work must continue until we are all joined together in the same faith and the same knowledge of the Son of God. We must become like a mature person growing until we become like Christ and have his perfection. This is how, as we, as a church, 
coming together as a body, that we can grow together to be like Christ, which is the goal. This is the new self that we have to put on. We are all different. We have our quirks, our idiosyncrasies, and sometimes it's not easy for us to get along with each other. And so often we are blind to our selves, you know, our shortcomings and our faults. And that's why we need each other to help us, not only to forbear with one another, to help one another, but to support one another in this journey to grow. So we need a community of believers to help us to need to live this new life in Christ. So in conclusion, let's start this new year with some stock taking and some spiritual spring cleaning. And these are the steps we can take. One, remember your identity in Christ. You are followers of Jesus Christ, disciples, and constantly remind of yourself your new identity. Set your hearts on things that are above because we have already died to the old life and we need to live according to the new life that we have in Christ. Two, we need to put away the old self. Spend time this year in spiritual health check, soul searching to get rid of sins that have been with you for a long time, which are not appropriate for our new identity in Christ. Three, put on your new self. Clothe yourself with Christian virtues, with Christ-likeness, especially love. Live with peace with another. Let your conversation and your worship be full of Christ's words. And let your actions and words be said and done under the view and the pleasure of the Lord Jesus. And how do we do this? As we spend time together as a community of believers, worshipping together, listening to God's word, studying God's word together, encouraging and supporting each other and serving together. May God help us to make a fresh start this new year as we put the old behind and put on the new. May we experience the abundant blessings and the fruitfulness in the Lord in the year ahead. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this new life you have given us. Help us, O oh God, to live according to what you want of us to be like Christ Jesus, because now we are your disciples, your followers, and we want to be like you. And I pray that in this new year, you will help us to truly follow you wholeheartedly and always. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.